This is Budlia, lo and behold, blue chip, dwarf butterfly bush. And uh, as you can see, it's a lavendery purple color. And um, it's a newer variety. Uh, I've only been aware of it for a year or two, and this is 2012. I've test grown it for a year now, and I really wanted to be convinced that it uh, repeat bloomed. I've grown Budlias for many years, but I've never had one that uh, repeat bloomed for me. And I will say this, that this one does exactly that as promised. Secondly, what I really love about it for as a design element is its size. This is a size that we use a lot in residential design and they get about three feet by three feet in size. Uh, so far mine have been about two to two and a half feet. And um, as you can see, beautiful flowers and lots of them uh, throughout the summer. So in plant design, one of the main things I look for is year-round interest or as long as, uh, throughout the year as I can get. And in this plant, um, we have two things working in our favor. We get a prolonged bloom during the warm season. Uh, these flowers are fragrant as well. And then uh, the size is working in our favor. And this pairs well with a lot of different plants. At the end of the video, you'll see a number of plants that we recommend as companion plants. But uh, just suffice to say, this medium size between 18 inches and 3 feet is a, um, a hard plant to find in terms of uh, that colorful of a display at that size and at that time during the year, especially the heat of the summer. A lot of plants have kind of cycled out of their strongest bloom and do that more in the spring. And uh, what I love about this is how it's still going strong in the heat of the summer. And uh, just one of the things, I, I think it's a really good pairing with carpet type roses because it's a com compatible size and the uh, color seems to be compatible with a lot of the carpet roses as well. So let's talk about maintenance. Um, the downside to this plant is that it repeat blooms and the flowers are not self-cleaning. So in order to get the dead flowers off, you have to wait a long time, which you're waiting into winter, or um, you have to cut them off. And if you're going to get in there, you see how these brown flowers are still on the plant, and there's plenty of uh, newer flowers as well. You've got to hand select the dead flowers, and that can be pretty tedious. The other way you can do it is you could shear this and push it back a bit and then just have it push a whole new flush. So that's a second way to handle that. So as you can see though, the flowers are still pretty dominant even though there's some dead ones on there. Uh, the plant doesn't look too bad. But I have seen photos of larger groupings of this that are in bloom, but there's so many dead ones on there. For me, it kind of de it detracts too much from the good look of the new flower. So I'd be inclined to have to maintain that and deadhead. And so the reason I'm talking about that is because that speaks to maintenance. And I would, I would call this moderately high maintenance because of the deadheading. And also in the end of winter or leading into spring, you're probably going to want to push this back a bit to get it denser for you. Um, I'm in California, an area we only get down in the 20s Fahrenheit during the winter. And um, I just leave this full size. The, a lot of the larger leaves fall off, but it still has leaves on the plant. So it's not as if you've got a deciduous shrub here. And that's another thing I like about it. Anytime I can have an, an evergreen shrub as opposed to a deciduous, deciduous one, that's one I'm going to opt for. But we don't have the stronger winters that a lot of people do. Um, my understanding is that these are hardy down to around zero degrees Fahrenheit, by the way. So they can take a lot of cold, uh, much like other Budlias. But if you've got milder temperatures, I think they're going to be more evergreen for you or kind of semi-deciduous, as we say out here. So um, great little perennial slash small sh shrub and um, lots of bloom. I would say the bloom time for mine kicked in around May. 
and um, I've heard April as well so April May starts pretty early and uh, this film is taken during August and they're still going strong and um, my experience last year was mine bloomed right through until September October so very prolonged bloom and um, hard to find a shrub with that kind of blooming power and uh, let's see deer so deer usually leave the Budlia family alone I don't have a uh, good experience with this one to ant speak to that uh, deer sometimes chew on Budlia so I would tell you you n need to test grow this one and put one out and see how they respond to it before you go buy in a whole bunch of these but uh, you know it has the potential to be deer tolerant. You'll want to grow these in full sun to get the maximum bloom out of them. And uh, water, I would say regular garden water. I would, you know, I've seen these be fairly drought tolerant, the Budlia family, once they're established. But um, I'm not really convinced. And I think for your best bloom production, I think regular to low to regular water is probably going to work best during the summer. And uh, feeding, anything that blooms this much is probably going to benefit really well from feeding. And I would feed these similar to uh, roses. So once they've done a really big bloom flush, you probably want to hit these with a little food to support the next cycle. And that's what I can tell you about Budlia, lo and behold, blue chip, dwarf butterfly bush. Excellent little shrub, um, great bloomer, great size. Check that one out. And to follow are a few companion plants that I recommend to go with this guy. Enjoy.